Well, this morning I want to talk to you about the five attributes of God's grace at work in your life. You know, the process of grace is a work that the Holy Spirit does in our life to enable us to become and to shape us and to form us into the likeness of Christ. And uh, grace sometimes is such a misunderstood word because it almost seems like a word that permits us to do whatever we want and to get away with whatever we want because God will love us anyway. And that really is, is bringing grace and the understanding of grace perhaps to its most least common denominator. But grace is so much more. And I want you this morning to just allow God to speak to you. And I want you to ask yourself the question, God, how is your grace working in my life? Let's each of us ask that question down. If you're taking notes, write that question down. God, how is grace working in my life? I'm going to focus in on Romans chapter 5 and reading from uh, verse 5 onwards, or rather from verse 1 onwards. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith. Now listen to this very carefully. Into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. I love that emphasis of how we have gained access to Jesus Christ by faith. And into this grace, we now stand. Every one of us as followers and believers of Jesus Christ, have a relationship with Jesus because of our faith, but we stand secure in it because of his grace. Amen? So you have a relationship with Jesus because of your faith in him, but you stand secure in it because of God's grace that is bestowed upon your life and my life. I love the Message Bible and the way it takes um, some of the older English that we use and so contemporizes it. And it says of the same verse, it says, we find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. I want you to understand as a child of Jesus Christ that God has you secure in the embrace of his grace for you. Can you say that? God has me secure in the embrace of his grace. And I want you to see that picture, paint that picture of your life, the embrace of his grace. So often we are trying to hold on to our relationship with Jesus Christ. We're trying to grapple for a, a walk with God, for some spirituality and meaning in our relationship with Jesus. We need to understand more than you desire to know God, God has already made provision for you to be embraced by and in his grace. That is a beautiful picture of truly what grace means to each one of us. Grace is sufficient for us in our times of greatest need. Paul pleaded with God to take away the trials that he was going, to, uh, going through. He referred to it as a thorn in his flesh. 
How many of you face challenging situations and circumstances in your life? And don't we all just wish that God would wave a magic wand and it will all just disappear and just move right in to non-existence and our lives would be completely just plain sailing. But I've been alive long enough and walked with Jesus long enough to know that more than God just doing a miracle, the greater miracle in my life is the working of grace in my life. And God speaks right into Paul's situation where he is asking for deliverance. God does not deliver him, even though he had the power to deliver him. Instead, God empowers him. And I want you to understand, too many of us are looking for deliverance when God wants to empower you to live in the freedom to which he has called you. Amen? And so rather than seeking for deliverance, Look to God, look to his word, look to the spirit of God and say, God, empower me in my time of greatest need. Your grace is sufficient for me. Can we all declare that this morning? Lord Jesus, your grace is sufficient for me. Why is it so? Because God needs to work in you to be able to work through you. I'm gonna say that again, write this down. God needs to work in you to be able to work through you. And unless God does a work within you, there is very little that he can do through you. We cannot circumvent the process of grace at work in our lives. We cannot circumvent the journey that we have to go through to the cross of Christ and come through the other side as an overcomer and victorious. So God needs to work in you to work through you. And so many of us forfeit the experience of the empowering of the grace of God in our lives because we want a quick fix. We want an instant turnaround to our circumstances and situations, our illnesses, our bank balance. Lord, we want you to snap your fingers over our lives and make it all disappear. When instead God is saying to you, I have given you my word. I have given you my Holy Spirit and I am empowering you to be able to live your life, to stand in grace and to live in the embrace of grace. God said personally to Paul, Paul, my grace is all you need. For my power is made perfect in weakness. What a powerful statement. All of us are talking about being stronger and better and brighter. Those things are important, but there are times in our lives where we reach the end of the rope, as it were. We are beyond the end of the cliff. You're almost on the precipice of something that is just too much to bear, where you feel weak, you feel overcome, you feel overburdened, you feel disappointed, you feel like there is no hope. And into that, God is saying, my power, which is the grace of God, the dynamis power that is at work within you, is made perfect in weakness. You see, when I am strong, I have no need for the grace of God. If I could save myself, I have no need for the mercy and the grace of God. But God has brought us to that point. All of humanity is in desperate need for the embrace of grace. And for those of us that have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that grace is freely available. That empowering is right there for you and me to take hold 
hold of. And Paul is so real. He says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. He understood. He couldn't fight the very battle that God had empowered him to come through. He couldn't give up on having to face the challenges that God wanted him to go through empowered. Do you understand that? So whatever you are facing in your health, in your wealth, in your relationships, in your circumstances at work, wherever, whatever it is as a result of COVID, know that in this is the empowering work of God in your life. Isn't it great? You know, I want to break down that verse that we looked at from Romans chapter 5. And there are five key words that I want to bring to your attention. The first one is suffering. I mean, who amongst you likes to suffer? Put your hand up first. Any of you. None of us like to suffer. In fact, our world is so created for comfort. Everything is geared to making our life so much better. Thank God for technology and the great uh, developments of our world that enable us to travel more comfortably, to basically live our lives more comfortably, to eat our food more easy, to do everything so much easier. We have lost the, the joy and the experience of process because everything that we receive has been processed. Your chicken comes to you processed, ready to cook. Your curry from Marks and Spencer's comes ready to pop in the oven. It has gone through the process of preparation so you can use it. But not so with you and me. God takes us through the process of preparation in the embrace of grace so that he can use you to be a blessing in this world. Amen. And for you to fulfill your assignment that he has called you to do. And so suffering is something that we all will experience. And suffering is unique and specific and very personal. Suffering is pressure. It is trouble. And we see the story of, a, of Jesus who, where he heals a blind beggar. Jesus goes up to the blind beggar in Luke chapter 18. And we see this blind beggar desperately uh, hears Jesus and knows Jesus can heal him. And is shouting out to get Jesus' attention. He was desperate because he had suffered the loss of sight since he was born. He wanted to be able to see. And he knew Jesus could do something for him. And Jesus notices this man's desperation in his suffering. And he says, what is it that you want? And he said, Lord, I want to see. This man had been waiting for years for the Messiah to come. For Jesus to be positioned just where he was. So he could in his desperation and suffering and hour of need reach out to Christ and say, Lord, I need you. Jesus responds to our need of him when we acknowledge it. One of the things that we must learn to embrace as we journey through grace is suffering. I know so many of you, we have journeyed with you through the years and we know some of your own personal stories of how you have pushed through. And today you are a testimony of the process of the power of God's grace and work in your life. Jesus responds to your need of him. Never be ashamed to acknowledge that you need God, in your suffering, when you acknowledge the need for God, 
It develops humility in you. And humility is what Jesus finds attractive because the Bible reminds us that he resists the proud. Suffering leads to humility and it produces perseverance. The next word I want to look at is perseverance. I love the way the Message Bible explains perseverance. It says, passionate patience leads to dependency on God. Perseverance is more than just pushing through the queue or trying to get ahead. That is not perseverance. That is about getting ahead. When you are at a long queue at Ikea and your tums, tummy is rumbling and you're thinking, I just want to pack up my blue bag and get home and unpack all the goodies from Ikea. And you want to jump and look for the shortest queue you can find. That ain't perseverance. That's shortcuts to relieving pain. But perseverance is passionate patience. That means I am willing to go through whatever I need to go through. And in that process, there is a passion that is embodied in my patience to keep pushing through till I come to what God wants me to come to. Amen. It's pushing through what you need to come to what God wants you to come to. Perseverance. God will use our desperation, our perseverance to open our eyes to our blessings. I've discovered so often that the blessing of God is just another prayer away. It is just another turn away. It is just another moment of patience away. And so often, saints, we give up just when we should be holding on and persevering. You are not holding on to something that is not of worth. You are holding on to Jesus Christ, his promises, his word, and the grace of God is empowering you to persevere. Amen. So suffering makes us sensitive and produces in us humility. Humility creates a dependency on God, which we need to persevere in our difficult times. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. There is a wisdom that must be applied in our lives that is a wisdom beyond the wisdom and understanding of our human ability to process information. And that is the wisdom of God. In difficult situations, in challenging times, if we can turn to God and persevere, he will give you a word of wisdom that will bring you through to the other side. I want you to understand it's okay to hurt. For some reason, for so many Christians, we keep rebuking pain, we keep rebuking hurt. I never find Jesus rebuking pain. I never find Jesus rebuking the suffering on the cross because he knew that he had to endure the cross because when he endured the cross, he would experience the victory. Come on. We want to write out that process of perseverance and endurance, but instead we want the victory. And so we proclaim faith and we forget grace. We declare faith, but we forget the power that is within you to go through what Jesus wants you to go through and experience the victory of the cross for yourself. Pain is not all bad. With pain comes change. And sometimes pain is necessary in order for us to grow. 
God uses pain to build perseverance for us to open up to the needs of other people to give us a heart of mercy and a more sensitive spirit to develop kindness in our attitudes. And we have learned through the pain and you know personally the pains that we have walked through, some of which we haven't shared that are specific and things that we carry that God, we never could understand when going through, why? It's not months, it's years. And you never understand, but you hold on because nothing else is as secure as holding on and knowing that God's grace is sufficient. People, there is no shortcut to victory in Jesus Christ. There is no alternative route to overcoming. And sometimes God allows things in our lives that we never can have an answer to. Psalm 109 says, for I am poor and needy and my heart is full of pain. Help me, O Lord my God. But we have seen through God's word that the perseverance develops in us, that endurance, that passionate patience develops in us character. Wow. And again, I refer to the message Bible that says character forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. You know, God allows suffering and pain because he wants to make sure that we learn to be grateful and thankful in every circumstance, to be content in all of our situations, and for God to build in us the character of Christ. He forges the tempered steel of virtue. I love that from the Message Bible. Go back to the Message Bible and read Romans chapter 5, and it's so powerfully painted. And that character that God builds in us, which are the virtues of Jesus Christ, which are the very things that Jesus wants us to embody, which are who he is. Those things produce in us hope. Hope. We all have hope. Hope in Jesus Christ. I know I'm speaking to many people this morning and there is a hope that we have and a hope that does not disappoint us. Can you say that? I have a hope that does not disappoint me. Come on, say it to your neighbor. You have a hope that will not disappoint you. I love how the Message Bible puts it. We are never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. That's such a beautiful picture of hope. We don't have containers enough to hold onto all that God has yet to give to you and me. When we push through, when we persevere, when God, we allow the spirit of God through his grace to build the character of Jesus in our lives so that we can stand strong. 
strong in the embrace of grace. People of God, the fifth thing that grace does, before I go to that, I want to read from Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. It says, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. Hope is a feeling of expectation, a desire for a particular thing to happen. Those containers ready and waiting for God to pour out everything that he promises and that we could more than we could ever hope for or imagine or comprehend. The fifth word I want to focus on in the embrace of grace is that grace empowers you to turn away from sin. For us to go through a life of whatever our sufferings might be, to build perseverance, to build character, to find hope, we must live free from the temptation. Not, we can't live free from the temptation of sin, sorry. We must live free from giving in to sin. Sin will always tempt us till the day we die. But we are empowered by the grace of God. Listen to what Titus 2.12 says. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. Listen to this now. In this generation. God, I can't live for you in this generation. The temptation is too much. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I mean, it's flying at me from every side. I can't live free from sin. I can't live free from temptation of whatever kind, whether it's the lust of the flesh, it's the lust of, for more money, the lust for power. God is just screaming at me. And the word of God says to us, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all. And it teaches us to say, everybody say no. Everybody say no, say no, say no, no, no to what? To ungodliness, worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. There is no excuse for us to live in the fullness of the spirit of God, when we embrace grace in our lives. And so I wanna encourage you, grace is the power of God at work in us. It motivates us in the direction of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this very carefully. The grace of God must never be misunderstood to mean God's permissibility to sin. I'll read that again. The grace of God must never be misunderstood to mean God's permissibility to sin and keep on sinning. Instead, it is God's empowering to resist sin and overcome it. Amen? And so often we say, oh, grace and more grace, grace abounds to you. Never mind, you know, you can just keep on sinning. No, 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 no. You have misunderstood the power of the cross. You have misunderstood the working of the process of grace in your life. It empowers you to live in this world. It empowers you to be different and distinct. It empowers you to be salt and light in darkness. Amen. Ha. 
How are you going to live your life this week? What has God spoken to you today? What are you taking away from God's word that I've shared with you today? I know for each one of you, in some way, God has spoken specifically. And I want us to go back to the scripture that I started with. And I want you to understand that you have gained access by faith into this grace in which you now stand. You are positioned in Christ Jesus in the embrace of grace. And rejoice in your sufferings because we know that sufferings produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Amen. I pray God's word has made its mark in your heart and in your minds this morning. And as you are listening today, I want each one of us just to bow our heads right now in the presence of God. And I want you to go to God with your struggles, your struggles of sin, your struggles of low self-esteem, your struggles of feeling inadequate in your walk and relationship with God your wrong thoughts of comparing yourself with other people. You are unique. There is no one as unique as you and as special as you. God can accommodate your uniqueness in the embrace of his grace. You might think, God, you don't understand how crazy I am. Well, no matter how crazy or far off you are, the grace of God is right there for you. You're standing in the grace of his embrace. Amen. And so this morning in London, I want each one of you to say, Jesus, if I have been self-dependent, if I have moved away from trying to work things out on my own, today, I want to surrender to the powering work of grace in my life. God, I will go through the process because in that process is my success. That's a word for every one of you. In the process of the working of grace is your success. Lord, I pray for every heart that is hurting, for every person that is battling with sin, or trying to overcome something on their own. I pray today, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that you would enable them to surrender and for them to stand again in faith in the grace in which they can stand and experience the embrace of your love and your acceptance and the empowering work of your grace in their lives right now. I pray that you would enable them to have courage to go through what they must go through to come to what you want them to come to. Lord Jesus, I pray for courage. I pray for bravery. I pray for endurance and a spirit of perseverance to push through. And at the end, the glorious hope. We will not have containers enough to contain what the Holy Spirit will pour out in our lives. May God bless his word to you. May his blessings be upon you right now as church and as you live this week in victory. God bless you.